All right. Hi, everyone, everybody. I'm Alex Nottingham, founder of All-Star Dental Academy. Thank you all for coming. We have Tom White here with us, our marketing guru, and Heather Minsky will be providing a live Twitter summary. Just follow her on Twitter at the at symbol dental all stars, all one word. If you've not already uh, done so, you can download the worksheet for Debbie and follow along by clicking the Expert Center link on the website, allstardentalacademy.com. Just log in using your free membership. Uh, you'll find everything uh, near the expert's name, and you can download the worksheet. If you don't have a login, um, it's really easy. You just go to the website, allstardentalacademy.com, click free membership, and follow the prompts. If you have any trouble whatsoever, do not hesitate to contact us or feel free to contact us, uh, and we'll be happy to help you. Not only will you have access to the expert's worksheet, there's some other bonus materials and goodies um, from both Debbie and our other experts. So this week, without further ado, our expert interview features Debbie Sedell Bitke. She is the CEO and founder of Dental Practice Solutions, an international consulting, coaching, and education business recognized as one of Dentistry Today's top consultants. Debbie joins us this week to talk about turning your hygiene department into a high-performing profit center. According to Debbie, most dental offices today have at least $100,000 of untapped potential in their hygiene department, even while dentists are asking how they can stop the, quote, hemorrhaging of their overall profits. This webinar will lay out some simple strategies to show you how to close the profitability gap and improve the overall health of your patients and your practice. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored that I'm here on the call, and I appreciate people taking time out of their day to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. So, um, yeah, I um, know that you wanted me to talk about profit centers in the Dell office, so I put together a short presentation for everybody today. And uh, I guess you wanted to ask me some questions next? Yeah, so... so um, um, for many years, the dental hygiene department has been thought of as a loss leader in the dental practice. And in the world of today's presented patient-centered dental practice, the dental hygiene department needs to be a very big profit center. The patients today gain optimal oral health from going to their dentist, and the dental practice needs to have healthy profits. And this can all happen when you follow these guidelines that I'll share with everybody today on the webinar. So um, when you see the words, the business of dentistry, what do you imagine? Perhaps you see a treadmill where high volume and financial reward are the main focus of the dental hygiene department. Or do you see a dental hygiene department where quality patient care and profitability are congruent? operating systems and protocols that would not allow one to compromise the other. You see, when I was very young, I was 12 years old actually, and um, we had to do a project in eighth grade. And we had to give a report, an oral report, and we had to interview who we wanted to be like as an adult in our career. and. On the, I grew up in L.A., and my dad, um, he was reading the L.A. Times that morning, and they had an article about a dental hygienist, and he had me read that. And he was telling me, this would be a great project for you. I think you would be a great dental hygienist. You know, you enjoy working with people. You like to talk a lot. And they make really good money. Back in the early 70s, a dental hygienist made over $100 a day. Imagine that. And so... I did my report, and I went and interviewed my parents' hygienist. I went to a pediatric dentist at the time. And my dad was, he was a pharmacist, and he worked with the dentist who he and his, my mother went to. And that dentist told my dad, I don't think she should be a dental hygienist because what I have found is that my dental hygienist, she just drained me of all my financial profits in this practice. She's just... It's a loss later. And I really think that we have shifted, times have changed. And today, being a dental hygienist, it's more than just cleaning teeth. So I think that's a paradigm shift that we need to be looking at today 
so that we're not thinking that, oh, she's, she or he, the hygienist, is just cleaning teeth. It's more today about creating optimal overall health. So what do you think about? And hopefully when you think about your dental hygiene department, you're thinking about total health and creating a beautiful smile and a longer life status for your patients. During the past 10 years, the goal of helping our dental patients it has now progressed from cleaning teeth into supporting good overall health and preventing disease. One thing that hasn't changed is the cost of running a dental practice. And today, it's so important that we have a profitable dental practice. It's important that the team understand the cost of running a dental business and also a hygiene department. It is when the team understands these financial aspects of running the business that members of the dental team will be committed to excellence. It is important to have team meetings that educate every team member about the cost associated with the daily operations of running your dental business. And I believe it's very important that the, the owner of the practice, the leader of that office, share their vision for the practice. Their practice philosophy, they need to share that with their team and let everyone know what is their mission, the why you do what you do. And also understanding what are the practice principles, what types of services does that dentist want to provide for their patients. Now the fact is the dental hygiene department, it, it should be the second largest profit center in every general dental practice. And even if you're a periodontist, it should be a very big profit center for your practice. And this provides support for the practice as a whole. Within the hygiene department are several other areas of profitability for your dental practice. Most of your patients spend approximately one hour, two to four times a year, with the hygienist. And because of this ongoing relationship with your patients, they should be more likely to remain in your dental office. And they should say yes and accept your treatment recommendations. And hopefully, these patients are referring other patients, family, friends, colleagues, to your dental office. This makes your hygiene department a business within a business. It makes the executives in this department held accountable for his or her success. When the dental hygienist is held accountable for the department's success, when he or she understands the vision and the principles of the dental practice, success definitely will follow. And you will find your team working in harmony when they all understand the vision for the practice. And they share the same code of patient ethics. And they take ownership for the way patients are treated. When every team member takes ownership of their role, the patients are sure to experience a caring attitude, an ultimate, an ultimate dental experience. They will experience the highest level of care, and I know profits are sure to follow. This is what provides a win-win situation. One of the most important aspects of the dental hygiene treatment that is often overlooked, and that's with our team of dental consultants finds, and this is the list of assessments. Dental hygienists, we feel like we're on a treadmill, but when the team can effectively plan their day, these assessments can really make the day run smoothly. And this is what will make patients feel they have received the highest level of care. And now this allows, it provides a higher level of comprehensive care. The treatment plan that you provide with your patient, it now moves to a higher level. So here is a list of 10 assessments. Well, there's five on this slide. And these are some of the patient procedures that stimulate profitability in the dental hygiene department. These 10 are all important aspects of your patient's oral and total health. Not all offices participate in this list of 10. And this is what will set your office apart when you offer a menu of these services to your patients. So here we take a look at um, one through five, I'm talking about various assessments. Um, 
and I'll share some of those assessments. But you know, you're doing your review of medical history. You should be doing a blood pressure screening. And many states make it a legal situation if you're not doing a blood pressure screening once a year. Um, are you doing a smile evaluation? Um, how often are x-rays taken? And then one of the most overlooked areas is the non-surgical perio treatment and use of laser and chemotherapeutics. Another new area that I often see overlooked is caries management by risk assessment. And then we'll talk a little bit about when to use fluoride varnish, and then also assessing what patients can benefit from sealant. The other areas are use of nitrous oxide and local anesthesia, and home care products. I will talk about the big benefit to your patients and the profits to your practice. I recommend all offices that I work with that they provide their patients with a smile evaluation. I recommend a tobacco cessation program. And then we'll talk a little bit today about nutrition assessment and supplementation for optimal health. So does your hygiene department implement most of these 10 services that I just reviewed? Maybe not with each patient. Many of you might have said, no, you don't offer these. So let's take a look at the, the list now. What are the missing pieces in your dental practice? And I want to recommend that you just choose to implement one or two of these if you didn't say yes to all 10 of those. Think about implementing one or two of those within the next month. Make an appointment this month. Uh, actually, it's we're at the end of the month, so within the next 30 days to discuss with your team how to implement these. And try to implement one or two of these successfully into your hygiene patient appointment. And I want to tell you to be patient with yourself when making these types of changes or implementing new services. Take time to discuss at a team meeting how to effectively implement these services with full participation from your entire team. These are assessments and services that create a profitable dental hygiene department and return a successful and very profitable dental practice. Now, I have less than 30 minutes. Alex told me he didn't want me to go probably past 20 minutes. So I can't really dig into when to do each one of these assessments or these services. But if you can email me, I have a method and a form which will allow you to create a systematic way to include these in your dental hygiene appointment without creating stress. Yeah, I'm such and a... It uh, provides I, direction I'm, what a, I'm the bad guy sorry? here. I'm the bad guy. No. <laughs> Plus also... Also, um, you know, get questions ready because I, we will open the floor for questions for, for Debbie if you like. So start preparing that as you listen. So go ahead, Debbie. Start for interruption. No problem. But I wanted to offer some direction on how to develop these assessments and services so that these the offices on this call can provide their patients with optimal care. And it, it may be that the front office team can support home care products. But I've developed a system where everyone has a key role. So it's working as a team and not just the hygienist doing all of this alone. We are so much stronger when we support each other and work as a cohesive team. So now I wanted to share the number one, the biggest and most overlooked assessment is this one. It's the annual full mouth periodontal screening exam. And still, here we are in the 21st century, and many hygienists who see a patient every six months, they neglect to pick up a periodontal probe prior to picking up a curate. I see this happening in every office I, I am in consulting. Most dental offices have approximately 15% of their adult patients with untreated or even undiagnosed periodontal disease. This is just a huge problem that we still have today in our world. If each of these patients continues down this path, we know what the research states. This disease process will continue, and the patient will at some point experience tooth mobility and possible tooth loss. So I want to ask, what will this cost your dental business? Take into account that most non-surgical periodontal treatment plans, they are approximately $1,000 in the United States here at least, 
and that's when I'm talking about four quadrants of scaling and replaning. I am not taking into account the use of antimicrobials, chem chemotherapeutics, and or laser therapy, but take into account the frequency also that they're going to come back for periodontal maintenance, and that's you know at least 12 weeks later. And so you're going to be adding that in four times a year. So what do you charge for a periodontal maintenance appointment? What, and I also, I get this question a lot, is can we alternate periodontal maintenance for prophylaxis? And this is another thing I see going on. Is, and I want to say, it is your better judgment. And the insurance codes will tell you it's up to the doctor's judgment. But once a periodontal patient, always a periodontal patient. And it's the same with a patient who has diabetes or high blood pressure. These patients are frequently seen and always at risk for future disease after the doctor has put a halt to the disease or after their medications or their diet has changed and they have the disease was halted. Their doctor is still monitoring it. And these patients who have periodontal disease are asked to schedule a preventive care appointment with their physician to be sure that their disease is also status quo. So there's no difference with our patients who are diagnosed with periodontal disease. It's the same thing as if they have diabetes or high blood pressure, high cholesterol, these other types of diseases. Same thing with periodontal disease. This is the optimization of hygiene procedures. And this is actually based off our national research of what is necessary to adequately treat and prevent periodontal disease. Which one of these pie charts currently shows where your dental practice is today when you're treating patients who have periodontal disease? When I'm out there speaking at dental conferences, the majority of offices are telling me that they're at about two or three. I've never once been with a team anywhere that says they're at number four. But this is optimal implementation for periodontal disease. Most offices are providing most of their adult patients with a prophylaxis. And I want to ask you, as you're looking at this chart, what can you set as a good goal for your office? How can you create greater success in treating your patients who have some level of disease? One of the important roles we take at Dental Practice Solutions with our patients is to establish your current level of treating periodontal disease. And then we establish realistic goals for your dental practice. And I want to suggest that you decide to change and increase the number of patients you're currently treating for periodontal disease. Um, I can say that 99% of the offices that I meet at dental conferences and when we're consulting, they're all around this level two. Some are at the pie chart number three. And unless, however, you're at chart four, I want to request that you gradually make a goal to increase your percentage here by 5% over the next 90 days. And then continue down this path until you reach an optimal level over closer to, to pie chart four. We today have many options and choices for treatment of disease. So I want to invite you to create new goals to get to that next level of success. It really is not that difficult if you approach this just in bite-sized pieces. So let me show you really quickly how you can calculate your current treatment percentage. So you're going to, um, in this chart here, you're going to put in the number of D1110, the prophylaxis patient, and then um, times 100 equals your percentage of prophylaxis, and then you'll do the same for 4910, your periodontal maintenance. And then you're going to also do um, your 4341, 4342, or 4355, and then you'll come up with your different percentages, and you'll see where you are on those pie charts. Now, this is another area that I frequently see. Uh, many patients still don't know. They have not heard about caries management by risk assessment. And this is another area of treatment that's overlooked. And especially with the pediatric patient, their first visit is when the patient gets their first tooth eruption. And this camera is now the standard of care for pediatrics patients. They have their first visit when that primary tooth erupts. And this appointment with that young child can be done in a console room with the child seated in the mother's lap. So it's just another protocol that I wanted to suggest that you um, are aware of because it is another area of profitability starting in the dental hygiene department. You're going to be providing the patient with a biofilm assessment and also with um, fluoride varnish. And um, 
there's more information. You can go to Google and you can Google the California Dental Association. In October and November of 2011, they did revise this treatment protocol for patients who are at moderate to extremely high risk of caries. So I want to recommend if you're not familiar with camera or you're not implementing these screenings in your practice today, this is a great resource for you. So how many patients qualify for a caries preventive measure? And I want to ask you, how will this benefit your patients and your bottom line? It's all up to you. How will you decide to answer these questions? When the hygienist and team all understand the need to prevent and intervene at an early stage versus that wait and watch, not only does the patient gain an improved level of health, but the dental hygiene production will increase. And I want to tell you that it's very important to establish periodontal and various preventive protocols today. Now is the time to cease treating the periodontal patient with a profi appointment and begin to utilize the preventive measures according to our guidelines for periodontal care and camera guidelines as well. Now another area that has changed in the past decade or so is that we're selling more home care products in the office. Many decades ago we wrote a prescription. I remember writing it on a card and I told the patient what to go to their pharmacy and look for. I wrote the names of the products on a piece of paper. And over the past few decades we, through research, know that 70% of our patients return to our dental office and they never took time to go and get that product that you recommend. Patients seldom took that piece of paper with them or they lost the piece of paper by the time they wanted to go out and find that product. But when patients have a toothbrush or that product you just talked about to them while well, seated in your treatment room, how likely are you, do you think they are to use that product immediately that day, that night? when they can buy it from you, take it home from their office, and you can show them exactly how to use it. We want our patients to actually invest in home care products from us because we're the experts. We know which toothpaste, toothbrush, mouth rinse, et cetera. We know what's appropriate for them versus going to a pharmacist and then the pharmacist telling them. My family, I come from a family of pharmacists, so I definitely don't want to offend them and I know that I'm not because my sister, everybody, they're all pharmacists and they shake their heads. No, they don't know what to tell the patient. This is another area, it's the um, wellness program and this is something new that offices all over the United States and especially in England, they are very forward thinking in England and they are establishing wellness programs in the dental office so we're not just creating oral health but treating the patient's overall health. The biophotonic scanner is a really great, I call it the lie detector. There's no way that the patient can lie to you about how well they're eating and their antioxidant levels. So this is what the biophotonic scanner looks like. Dr. Oz did a whole one hour program on this utilization of the biophotonic scanner. And um, you can see it's just the carotenoids there that are measured in the palm of your hand. and um, it's really easy, it takes 90 seconds to do, but by recommending pharmaceutical grade supplements to your patients, they can increase their carotenoid scores. And um, these are micronutrients over on the left of the screen here. They are proven to increase your antioxidant score. We know this because we can now measure with the biophotonic scanner. Inside these micronutrients are equal to two to three shopping carts full of vegetables and fruits. And we know, God forbid, we would never eat that many fruits and vegetables, but we can actually take them through supplementation so it's very natural and they're pharmaceutical grade. So what areas can you tap into after today? We're talking here about creating profit centers in your practice, so I wanted to crunch some numbers. Here you can see what this means to your practice when you just take two hygiene patients who enroll in periodontal, non-surgical periodontal therapy. Just if they're doing four quadrants of scaling and root playing, I don't know what your office charges for four quadrants of SRP, but the majority of offices that I have worked with are at least $1,000. And then take into account 
that some of these patients are going to come back, even if they finish up the scaling and root plane in the month of June, you're still going to come back for a periodontal maintenance visit several times this year. And um, I have it written down here. What that is, what that means to your practice there, you can see if you just take, do two hygiene patients a week for a year, that's $105,000. And that's not a difficult goal to attain over the next 50 weeks. So here's where I'm coming from is back to that optimization of hygiene procedures. This, you know, this is a way to get to your next level of success in treating patients according to the AAP guidelines. Canberra is very simple. As a hygienist in clinical practice, I have worked very, uh, I dug deep into Canberra many years ago when it was first coming out. We had all this research available at our fingertips. And it's easy when you start classifying your patients moderate to extremely high risk, it's easy to have 50 patients who will have a fluoride varnish four times a year. They're coming in every three months, every 90 days have a fluoride varnish. And then they're going home with a 5% sodium fluoride gel to use at night at least. So that's another profit center of $9,000. The wellness program. Um, just four patients a week spending $200. Those are your net profits, by the way, on the supplement. So $200 over 50 weeks. Um, that's another huge profit center for your practice right there, $10,000. And so um, same-day services, this is, these are just some simple questions on a form that I have. And the patient just completes it in 60 seconds while they're waiting to be taken back. They check in at the front office, receive the form check out once a year, they just check off how they're feeling about their smile, what would they like to change, basically asking, if I could move, if I got a wave of magic wand, how would you like your teeth to look? And most people are going to tell you that they want their teeth wider, but it also opens the door to doing more veneers and implants, etc. So I put a low amount here, just $200. Let's say I talked to an office yesterday, they charged $199 to whiten the patient's teeth. Do you think that over the next year, 400 patients would whiten their teeth if you asked them that simple question? And that, how much does that mean to your office when they charge, when you charge 400 patients, $200? Home care products. Um, some of these are bringing in 70% net profits on average to your practice. So if you have these available to your patients, self-efficacy is going to increase, and that's going to benefit the hygienist by not having to work so hard on their patients. Their patients are going to have a better report when they leave the dental hygiene treatment room. That makes them happy. They're spending less money on advanced procedures in your office because they have a healthy amount. That's just 4000 at the least. So I put it all together here with your non-surgical periodontal therapy, camera, wellness program, same day services, and your home care products coming up to adding potentially $208,000 over the next 50 weeks. And it's just taking some of these in bite sizes. Not every office on this call has a protocol for establishing if a patient is moderate to extremely high risk for caries. Not everybody on this call has a wellness program or is asking a simple question. If there's one thing that you could change about your smile. What would that be? And just adding a few of these can add so many different little profit centers, which equal a big profit center in your dental hygiene department. This is bringing the profits to your practice. I get so many dentists calling me over the last three years, Debbie, how can I stop the bleeding on my schedule? Debbie, how can I increase profits? They're down like never before. And this, I bring to you today, is a win-win situation. A win for you and a win for your patients. They're going to be your 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 tribe of people, they're going to think that you're, they're your raving fans, and they're going to be telling their friends, family, and colleagues all about you. So, um, Alex, I want to turn it over to you. Wow, you ended on the button. On the Alex? button. Great, great work. Great work. <laughs> Should I turn to my next slide so they can see my phone number? Or uh, no, we're, we're going to get... Um, sure, yeah, go ahead. Put that in there so they can take that down. Um, the... And also a very pretty picture, you know, so they can enjoy looking at that. Um, My most fun. <laughs> it's, uh, so I'm going to launch a poll, everybody, here, and um, you're going to see it on your screen. Um, 
so I'd like you all to go ahead and start uh, select which what is your challenge in creating a more profits in your hygiene department I'm just curious to get a little poll here if you would help us and we can talk a little bit about that and then we'll get right to questions I got a lot of questions already I mean I have one here um, that was given to me uh, also you can after we finish the poll, feel free to raise your hand um, or type to me your question. I want to get those done, you know, first before we get into the the pre the questions that were submitted to us before the program, and we'll get to as many as we can. And whatever we don't finish, we'll do it over time. Okay. All right, so we've got a couple people left. And, you, and if you're not familiar where you can do the polls, I believe, I don't know if I'm allowed to do it, but I believe you can, you can do it uh, on your GoToWebinar, either the screen itself or, right, so organizing panelists, we can't vote. So sad. So, or at below where you see your name and the, the box itself. So I'll give another 15 more seconds and then we'll close the poll. And while we're waiting, does anybody have any questions? Uh, raise your hand if you do. There's a little button you can raise your hand or you can submit your, your question below and I can ask Debbie. Okay, so I'm going to close the poll. And we actually got, we got 67% said last minute cancellations, 33% said lack of patient retention, and another one said other. Who said other? Does anybody quit, uh, brave enough to share? Anybody? Okay, so what do you think about that? You know, the 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 main one is last minute cancellations is the biggest uh, challenge they have. Oh my gosh, well that's that's uh, very interesting because I've been getting that question for three years now, and um, I actually have developed a system for that. So um, I believe that it's important to let your patients have a reason not to cancel. We all know that what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking about this, by the way, in a dental office I was consulting with a few months ago, and I was sharing with them what we need to do about this and how can we create value because so many patients, I was telling the office that they will cancel last minute because they want to go get their hair done. And I'm not kidding you, that day somebody actually called and they canceled because they had a hair appointment. So patients, and I was talking to another office yesterday, they don't even care that they charge, that office charges $50 wow. if they cancel last minute. And they're in Palm Desert, and they are snowbirds, and they, snowbirds will pay $50. They don't care. They will pay $50 because of a last minute cancellation. So I developed something, and I don't mean this to be a self-promotion, but this has worked. And it is called Forever White, mm -hmm. and it's a whitening system that your patients, first of all, I was talking about whitening as is something that most patients, when you ask them what is one thing you want to change about your smile, most patients will say, White, I want my teeth to be whiter. And so I developed a system, and I'm able to get full cell whitening to the dental office, $3.17 a syringe, by the way. And then the patients understand that they can whiten their teeth. We recommend you charge between nine and one hundred and ninety dollars for the whitening. Uh, most offices choose to charge around ninety dollars because our whitening for a new patient is less than ten dollars your cost. And the patient has a form that they sign. They understand that they're going to whiten their teeth. Not going to cost them a lot of money, and they know that twice a year. If they are not canceling last minute, and I say last minute 72 hours, but if they're not canceling last minute, if they give at least 72 hours cancellation notice, 
they are eligible to receive a syringe of the bleach to touch up their teeth twice a year. So the wow. syringe is three dollars and seventeen cents. That's six dollars and thirty-four cents to your office that you're giving annually to that patient. And those patients, I talked to my sister. She had three syringes of another whitening product. She paid fifty dollars for. Wow. And so imagine your patients think free whitening to them is that's worth something for them. They're not paying fifty dollars for that. I have found this to stop last minute cancellations. So longer than you wanted to hear, but that's my answer, and that's why I came up with this system. So um, patients, a lot of patients, they we can't charge for service that hasn't been rendered. We can have them sign a form that there's a charge for the cancellation, but many offices I've worked with, they do not want to charge. This. But I tell you, this, this makes a huge benefit because we're thinking what's in it for me. Right. So hopefully that was helpful. I, I think that's awesome. I mean... You know, I've been doing a lot of marketing, and Tom, and we do a lot of work with Dennis, but um, I didn't come across that or put that together. I mean, I'm going to take that to the bank. That's fantastic, and I think the listeners absolutely should do that. That's a really great program. Um, and in a moment, we'll, we'll talk and give them your contact information so they can certainly talk to you about, you know, more information about that, about that program. And I have one question submitted to me before I get into some of the ones we already have submitted earlier. Um what do you do to motivate and incentivize hygienists that have been in an office for a very long time and they're very set in the way? So either the, the dentist just doesn't have the gut to let them go or they're just set and they're not open to these things. So how do you, how do, you do that? How do you incentivize? How do you get them to get on your page doing these new activities and be opening to new ideas? And that is a very good question, whoever asked that question, because it happens a lot. And I typically will find this with hygienists who have been in the practice for 10 or more years. And I, what I have found works best, uh, for example, I was working with an office, and the hygienist did not, they got the, vel the Vizolite. They started using Vizolite they were supposed to, but she did not want to use the Vizolite. She's been with the doctor for 14 years. And it was just having a third party in there who could empathize and understand where she was coming from. She felt like she was rushed for time. And, and when we got down to the nitty-gritty of her values, she did not believe that the telescope really worked. And so another thing is that in order for somebody, I believe that successful people, and of course you want to have a people in your practice, your team members be successful in my, their mindset, but successful people, wouldn't you agree, have passion and enthusiasm? Yes. And so how can you unlock passion and enthusiasm mm -hmm. so that people come to your office, your team comes, enjoying the day? Do they need more money? Um, we've set up incentive programs, you know, the hygiene, uh, the whole team got a bonus dependent on collections of some of these other services, these adjunctive services. Maybe money is the motivator, but for this one hygienist, she did not understand the value. So I, I hope that's helpful. It is. Thank you very much. Um, and also, how, what would you say in terms of the other question that was lack of patient retention of being an issue? What the number one reason why patients are not staying in the practice, the number one reason is because they're leaving the office without a next appointment. So I have found that most offices will have at least 10% of their patients who have just fallen off. It's like they think they've fallen off the face of the earth. So I have another system to reactivate them, but that's the number one reason. Um, and the other thing is that patients will go somewhere else because of their insurance telling them to do that. So I think that it's adding value to your services. And the why you do, I talked about that in the presentation, why do you do what you do? And sharing that with not only the team but your patients. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I really insist on going to the same physician, the same acupuncturist, 
the same hairstylist, you know, and it's creating that value with your patients, I think will help with that to stop that attrition of patients. Great stuff, Debbie. Great stuff. Um, so let's get to some of the questions. And again, I'm, uh, some people have been submitting me questions. I've been asking them. Uh, continue to do so as we go along. Feel free to you know raise your hand if you uh, want me to call, you know, speak with you, or if you want to speak with Debbie. Um, while we do that, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the questions. Now we answered number two in the worksheet, uh, so let's go to number one. So as a dental hy uh, hygienist consultant. Uh, what do you find the biggest untapped area in dental hygiene is for the Department of Dental Hygiene? Definitely the, par the periodontal screening exam is not being done, and I'm talking about all of those points. I'm talking about reception, mobility, bleeding, all of that, you know, furcations, et cetera. These dental professionals on the phone know exactly what I'm talking about or the, this um, webinar. And it's just doing that assessment and measuring and documenting all those points and educating your patient on the value of treating periodontal disease sooner than waiting for later. And that's the number one area that I see just falling off. It's not being treated enough. And that's why I brought up that chart twice for the optimization of dental hygiene procedures. Okay, excellent. Um, I, we really only have time for one more question, then we have to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to ask one more question we have from the worksheet and allow the audience one last uh, opportunity to ask a question. But we'll, we'll cover the rest of the questions in overtime, which we'll post as well um, for uh, you know, the, the viewers. So the question is, can you give us two tips to improve our patient exams? Uh, that's the first part, because dental hygienists, hygienists are, tend to run behind. Do you have any suggestions on how we can stop this? Oh, yes. Okay, so number one tip is do not wait until the end of the dental hygiene appointment for doctor to come and do the exam. Um, it, ta it should take about 20 minutes to do all the screening exams and then you're going to communicate the treatment that you find necessary for that patient. And at that point in time, doctor knows that it's about 20 to 25 minutes into the appointment. From 20 to 25 minutes up until 10 minutes before the end of that hour, that's when doctor needs to know he or she can come and do the exam. The other tip that I have, and this is one of the complaints I get from dentists a lot, is that they come into the hygiene room to do the exam and the hygienist does nothing. So it's really important, and that's another form that I filled, is that the hygienist has a form, and, and we do this for about four to six weeks when I get this complaint, we go through this form, and so the doctor comes in and it's very quick, doctor's just saying, hello, how are you, Glad, happy to see you, boom. Now the hygienist is reporting, today Alex has told me he has high blood pressure, he's taking this medication, I did a periodontal screen, like everything, boom, 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 boom. And it's a whole list, and you need to be practicing that, role playing with the whole team, practice that, so that you can make it perfect. Awesome, Debbie, awesome. Uh, like I said, the, the, the other questions we're going to cover in over, our overtime program, which is an audio program, we will have that posted along with the webinar. Debbie, really appreciate the fantastic information you shared. Um, if our listeners want to learn more about you and your programs, what is the best way to contact you? I see we have a, a number and a website. Um, you know, what would what would you suggest? And then I have a special offer as well that that you were talked about. Okay, so they can email me personally if they prefer. It's Dental Practice Solutions at Gmail dot com. That's my personal email. I'll get that really quickly. And if they could just please reference that they were on the All-Star Dental Academy webinar, that would be great so I know where they came from. I get a lot of emails. And are they, if they're, you know, they're welcome to call that toll-free number, which is on the screen right now. And I'm glad you said that because what we spoke about, and I really appreciate this, is Debbie is making available to all All-Star Dental participants and free members that if you mention that you're, you know, that you're, are affiliated with us or you were on one of our webinars, 
uh, to her, you get 15% off any of her products or services. Just mention that's an added benefit of participating with All Star. I really, uh, almost like Walmart, I wouldn't say Walmart, but I'm, you know, a strong arm in our experts that give something away to you guys. So I really appreciate it. Debbie was not, was not difficult to do. I really appreciate that. So, so again, webinar will be online. Um, mark your calendars for next week at 5 p.m. Eastern. That's what, um, 2 p.m. Pacific. We'll be interviewing Dr. Levine, the digital dentist, and he's going to be talking to us about six steps to a paperless practice. Registration opens tomorrow. Seats are limited, as always, so register early. Debbie, thanks again, and we really hope to have you on uh, in the future, and I, we talked about that. It would be a great honor for us. Um, on behalf of Tom White, uh, Heather Minsky, and myself, Alex Nottingham, thank all of you. I thank all of you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. And now go out there and be an all-star.